Hey guys, how are we doing? Back on another video from Geekdom Wen Wen. I really enjoyed his uh, all freezer forms explained. Again, I think I mentioned this last time, but uh, I like how he can go into um, behind the scenes things. So like why the forms look the way they are, or why things happen the way they are, and what they're based on, and things like that. As well as how powerful they are, stat boosts, things like that. And uh, I hope he'll do the same with the uh, with the cell forms. Let's see what Geekdom has to say, shall we? On the previous edition of the Geekdom 101 Transformation Guide, guide I went into all of the Frieza yeah, forms. Yeah, it was boss video, I liked now it. Now I figure it'd be natural to move forward in the series and discuss the next huh? super villain That's that close. the Z Fighters would battle against, and that would, of course, be Cell. Yeah, so man. in this video, we're going to go through Cell's various transformations and explain them in detail like never before. Cool. Let's go. In the video I did about Frieza's transformations, I discussed how Frieza's forms work sort of backwards in that his base form is his final form and he created the other forms to suppress his power. Yeah. With Cell, it's totally different it's than opposite. Frieza or even the Saiyans. Cell has to absorb two specific characters to change his physical appearance. We perfect. find out that Cell does absorb regular humans to increase his power, and mm -hmm. even in GT they tease that he almost absorbed Goku at one point. But there are two specific artificial humans, 17 and 18, that were created specifically not just to kill Goku, but also part of the master plan of the Red Ribbon survivalists to get revenge on Goku by becoming essentially part of Cell's perfect body. So it makes you wonder if 17 and 18 were just created as a byproduct of Cell, hmm. or if Cell was plan B. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but no. we're going to go through Cell's transformations, not in the order of appearance this time, but more so from where he began, his humble beginnings as a baby. And that's well, the tiny first thing we're going to discuss yeah. here, and that is Baby Cell, which first appears in Dragon Ball Manga Chapter 365 and DBZ Episode 145. Okay. He lives <clears throat> in the basement laboratory. This Cell in the present timeline was, of course, killed by Trunks and Krillin of when they go <laughs> into the laboratory and discover Trunks the blueprints for about. the androids, as well as seeing Baby Cell there. And in the future timeline, of course, he winds up getting killed because it grows into Imperfect Cell, and Trunks kills him in Dragon Ball Z episode 194. Mm -hmm. But essentially, Baby Cell is just an embryo, really. He's just there like a fetus, unaware of what's going on, has no idea about his purpose until he actually grows into what I would consider to be known as Larva Cell. Yeah, that was now, really interesting when it cracked open and they find it of the uh, time machine. Cell was of another world. Mm. And we first saw this larva form in manga chapter 358 dragon ball z episode 140 just five episodes before we saw baby cell and this was discovered of course by bulma in the present timeline mm -hmm. this mysterious creature that left behind this big husk and would bury itself underground so even though cell is a biomechanically engineered artificial human he has the characteristics of you know, a lot of insects, like, like bug, maggots yeah. and moths and bot flies and things like that, and it would bury itself underground until it would finally rise up in his imperfect form, or whatever you want to call it, his hmm. first form. First and we form. also find out that <sighs> he actually wasn't originally in this form. What ends up happening is in one of the alternate timelines, the Cell timeline, Cell kills oh, yeah, he takes the time goes machine, back goes into back that, in doesn't time, he, from the first form. But he form. can't fit in the time machine, so he went into his larva form. Which yeah, I always I found about weird that. because I don't think Cell is that much taller than Trunks, but whatever. <laughs> and as a result of that, that's when he was back in his larva form until he hatched once I forgot again. that he went And that brings back. us to the form that's called Imperfect Cell or First Form Cell. Mm. Now this form of Cell, many fans have thought is the coolest and he definitely it is a very boss. unique look. He's got sort of an alien kind of look to him, you know, kind of a beakish mouth or whatever, lots of green spots everywhere, sort of an unusual looking character and he reveals to Piccolo his entire evil plot of, you know, going back in time and absorbing 17 and 18 and that whole thing. He first appears in Dragon Ball Manga Chapter 361, which correlates with Dragon Ball Z Episode 141. And understand something interesting, here's a tidbit, if you've only watched Dragon Ball Z dubbed, 
Damian Clark changes his voice for Cell with each subsequent transformation, mm-hmm. whereas in the Japanese version, it's the same actual voice. Oh, right, I've not watched so this sub version. Kind of interesting. Weird. Either way, he looks hmm. to be like a teenager in a way, lizard like, not fully formed. Then we have second form Cell, which is the Cell that appears after absorbing Android 17 mm-hmm. and a whole bunch a bit more of buff. humans from town to town. But of course, 17 was the one that triggered his evolution. Now, this version of Cell was able to annihilate Android 16, something yeah. that Imperfect Cell could not do. Now, some fans have referred to this form as semi-perfect Cell. That is a fan-made term. The original actual term is just second form Cell. Second, yeah. But either way, we first see this in Dragon Ball Z episode 152, which correlates with manga chapter 372. And so he has the same voice powerful, in each form in the so match, hmm. Nowhere close to That's being weird. a match to Super Vegeta and, of course, his son, Trunks. Trunks, I, of course, covered Vegeta and Trunks' powers in previous editions of this Transformation Guide when we talked about Grade 2 and Grade 3 Super Saiyan. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, Vegeta's hubris... (laughs) Yeah, he's like, do you know what? Go on, absorb. And then we have Konzentai Seru. Perfect Perfect cell. cell. And this is absolute perfection, according to him. He has the cells of... Goku and many of the other Z fighters, he is stronger than Super Saiyans easily. Goku, Vegeta, and Trunks. He is so strong that when he first became Perfect Cell, he was referred to as a god of destruction by the narrator. Oh. Now, obviously, this is before Toriyama came up with Beerus, so yeah. you can't take that as a literal title, but hmm. you can take that with the fact that Krillin threw a full power Kienza on his neck, neck yeah. and <laughs> did, did nothing. nothing. Yeah. So, this version of Cell is very very strong yeah. now understand that in Daizenshu 4 it is referred to as the developed form but obviously Konzentai is perfect cell and we first see this in Dragon Ball manga chapter 382 and Dragon Ball Z episode 159 after he absorbs 17 and 18 he has them both in his body and he became perfect cell now the discussion of whether or not cell was a super saiyan is one that's been going on for what? decades at this point Cell does have Saiyan traits. Oh, okay, he does yeah, have okay. the blood right. of yeah. various Saiyans, so it would make sense that he would be able to tap into a Super Saiyan type of power. Hmm. In fact, we see Cell power up with the yellow aura, aura yeah. quite a few times I know, in perfect about that. form, and we've even seen him get really, really buff when he not only mocks Trunks, but also fights Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. We have seen him go really, really buff. Some hmm. fans have said this is Cell tapping into grade 2 and grade 3 Super Saiyan, it could be. Again, we see this in manga chapter 387 and Dragon Ball Z 165 for the first time. It's up to you to decide whether or not this is an actual, quote, transformation. I don't think it is. It's just more so Cell tapping into his Saiyan cells and sort of incorporating that with his main huh. body. That's the way I've always perceived it. That's an interesting it, theory. And that's the way I think it is. Then we have a real controversial one, and that is Super Perfect Cell, Super Konzentai <laughs> Super Perfect. Now, what's interesting about this is, in the old Budokai games, they refer to this form as Power Weighted, whatever that means, and actually, in the Japanese games, regular Perfect Cell is called Konzentai Seru, but this version of Cell is often referred to as Perfect, with the English words P-E-R-F-E-C-T Cell, and not like Konzentai with Japanese kanji. So if you ever play a Japanese DBZ game, you may see this. Understand if it's in big English letters, they're referring to this cell. Now this cell came about when Goku sacrificed his life to teleport cell away from Earth and he blew himself up. Well, when he blew himself up, a single cell of his nucleus survived and was able to regenerate and somehow was able to, I guess instead of his neural processor or something, have the memories of his perfect form, but also he was able to use what is referred to as a Zenkai slash a Saiyan power, not the form, the ability, and was not only able to regenerate into his perfect body, but actually got quite the power boost into becoming Super Perfect Cell. This was in Dragon Ball Manga Chapter 413, which correlates with DBZ Episode 189. Now, a lot of fans throughout the years have theorized that Super Perfect Cell is like his equivalent of Super Saiyan 2, Hmm. which makes sense. I mean, he's a lot stronger, he looks to be a lot bigger, and he's got the lightning bolts around him. Hmm. So it is possible that he's sort of like his equivalent to Super Saiyan 2 by tapping into those beautiful Saiyan cells that he has inside of him that keep giving him 
stronger and stronger power, including the ability to exploit Zenkai. To me, this is one of the biggest Zenkai power boosts in the entire series. Mm. And even though it looks as if he was able to overpower and rival Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, Gohan was holding back, as Goku stated to him, because he was afraid of the Earth being destroyed yeah. by him in Cell's battle. But Goku assures Gohan that he needs to use all his power, and when he does, Cell got sent to dust. So, well, Vegeta did distract no him for a moment. Cell's but, mm. power was impressive, but he was still below Gohan, which I'll do a whole video on that, because I think some people really underestimate Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. Either way, this is the last <laughs> time that we see Cell in his super perfect form. Will Cell return like everybody else has? Maybe, but until now, that is every version, every form of Cell we've seen in Dragon Ball Z. Thank you again for watching the Transformation Guide. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next one. That was cool. I do like how he goes into, like... I, descriptive stuff that people have talked about in behind the scenes. Like I never thought about that. That obviously he has all the cells of everyone, so he has the Super Saiyan cells. I never thought about the the uh, the yellow aura being the same, and then the lightning being exactly the same as when Gohan went Super Saiyan two. That is an interesting theory. Hmm. I know. I don't know why I never thought like that. But anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. What did you guys think of that? What did you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe, help me already. Leave comments down below. Let me know what you watch and discuss in the videos. And I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys next time.